Mabel and Dipper Pines are having the craziest summer vacation ever in the quirky town of Gravity Falls, Oregon. Working at their Grunkle Stands tourist trap, the Mystery Shack, the Pines twins stumble upon some bigger secrets this town is hiding and quickly learn that things are definitely not what they seem. I'm Emily, and here on Channel Frederator, we're going to give you 107 facts about Gravity Falls. Number one, a reoccurring number in the series, 618, June 18th, is actually creator Alex Hirsch's birthday. It's also his twin sister's birthday, which makes sense because they're twins. Number two, speaking of Alex and his twin sister Ariel, Dipper and Mabel are loosely based on the siblings. Mabel's love for boy bands came from Ariel's obsession with NSYNC. Lance Bass was her band member of choice, which is why Alex asked him to come and voice the members of several times. Number three. Seuss is based off of Jesus Chambrat, who is a friend of Alex Hirsch. They attended Cal Arts together, and Alex notes that Jesus was of indeterminate age. We knew that he was a few years older than the rest of my friends at Cal Arts, but we never knew how old for sure. Number four. Not only is Alex Hirsch the creator of Gravity Falls, he's also the voice of Grunkle Stan. You got no muscles, you smell like baby wipes. Seuss. Oh man, I'm so glad I turned my head. Bill Cipher. I have a head that's always screaming. And reoccurring characters like Old Man McGucket. I'm Old Man McGucket! And the gnomes. Steve, Jason, and I'm sorry, I always forget your name. Schmabulock. Number five. What the H? The letter H is a reoccurring symbol in Gravity Falls, and may be a nod to creator Alex Hirsch's last name. Number six. During the end credits of each episode, there is a cryptogram. The cryptograms in episodes 1 through 6 utilize the Caesar cipher. Episodes 7 through 13 utilize the Atbash cipher. Episodes 14 through 19 utilize the A1Z26 cipher. Episode 20 utilizes a combined cipher. Episodes 21 and on utilize the Visionaire cipher. Number 7. Listening to the whisper at the end of the theme song in reverse gives you a clue on how to solve the ciphers. <laughs> Number eight, Alex Hirsch writes all of the ciphers himself, and they're usually inserted last minute. That is it, <laughs> comedy gold. I love it. Number nine, Bill Cipher takes on the form of the Eye of Providence, also known as the All-Seeing Eye of God. Number 10, the cave Dipper is seen exploring in the theme song has what appears to be ruins on the wall. Upon closer inspection though, one character doesn't match up with any known ruins, and the others have no translatable meaning. <laughs> Number 11. All three journals shown have maze pages that fit in with one another. Number 12. In the animated short Stan's Tattoo, Dipper tries to solve the mystery of what Stan's tattoo is. Stan denies that he has a tattoo. I don't, but you do. What do you mean I... <laughs> but in other episodes, it can be seen on the right side of his back. Bill Cipher has said that Stan's tattoo actually means watch your back. Number 13. Alex's sister Ariel had a lime green troll doll sweater in elementary school. That helped inspire Mabel's assorted array of colorful sweaters. Hirsch also felt that because Mabel is so fun-loving and bubbly, We had a dance party for no reason! Go, go, go! <laughs> she wouldn't be constrained to wearing the same outfit in every episode, like most cartoon characters. Washing clothes is a waste of time! I'm a busy guy! Number 14. Grunkle Stan is based on Alex Hirsch's real Grandpa Stan. Number 15. Colleen Stan Pines, Grunkle Stan, was inspired by Alex Hirsch's great aunt Lois. She referred to herself as Gronty Lois. Number 16. When she was young, Ariel Hirsch wanted a pet pig. This inspired Alex Hirsch to give Mabel her beloved pet, Waddles. Did you say Mabel or Doorbell? <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. Waddles was named by Ari Wallington, a writer on the show. He was named after the pet pig she had when she was growing up. Every year her family would raise a pig named Waddles, which would then be cooked and eaten. Hopefully Mabel's Waddles doesn't share the same fate. Number 18. The location of Gravity Falls was inspired by Boring, Oregon. Hirsch's family would sometimes pass the town on road trips. Though they never visited, Gravity Falls is what Hirsch imagines Boring might be like, or that it might be the opposite of what Boring is. Number 19. When Waddles eats mushroom powder that morphs him into a super genius, he constructs a machine for himself that allows him to talk. Greetings, friends. It is I, Waddles the pig. The genius voice behind that genius pig? Neil deGrasse Tyson, of course. Number 20. Kristen Shaw was Alex Hirsch's absolute choice to play Mabel from the get-go. She was such an integral part of his vision that Alex has said, I would have just stopped working if we hadn't gotten her. I would have probably quit. Number 21. Kristen actually cosplayed as Mabel for San Diego Comic Con in 2013. 
She said that all of the characters she's played, Mabel is the closest to her actual self. Number 22. Alex's sister, Ariel Hirsch, was a guest star in the episode Boys Crazy. She played Pacifica Northwest's fuchsia-haired friend. He was talking to me! Ah! Number 23. Matt Chapman, a former writer on Gravity Falls, is co-creator and primary voice actor on Homestar Runner. Strong bad, get off my property! I hate you, Grunkle Stan! Shut up your face! Number 24. Ariel and Alex Hirsch both grew up in Piedmont, California, which is also where Mabel and Dipper are from. Number 25. Jason Ritter, the voice of Dipper, almost wasn't the voice of Dipper. He recorded for the pilot, but committed to another show while Gravity Falls was waiting to be picked up. Lucky for us, the other show got cancelled and Ritter was able to take on Dipper again. Number 26. The art director of Gravity Falls, Ian Worrell, is Alex Hirsch's college roommate. Number 27. Mabel once had to go to the hospital for eating scratch and sniff stickers. Number 28. Dipper's favorite band is a nerd rock group called The Bad First Impressions. Alex Hirsch describes them as they might be giants-ish. Number 29. Secretly, Dipper also listens to top 40 hits and the Icelandic pop group BABBA. BABBA is, of course, a parody of the 70s Swedish pop group ABBA. Their song, Disco Girl, is a parody of ABBA's Dancing Queen. Number 30. Grunkle Stan has been practicing the same coin trick since 1982. He still hasn't gotten it. Number 31. Wendy and Robbie met at a fifth grade birthday party. Robbie pulled Wendy's pink tails and she socked him in the face. He ended up with a chipped tooth. Robbie remembers the incident, but Wendy does not. Number 32. Seuss's role models are Grunkle Stan and his Abuelita. I vacuum the walls now. He also looks up to wrestler Terry America. Number 33. One of the Manitars is named after a full-size taxidermy buffalo that Alex Hirsch keeps in his office at Disney. Dubbed Beardy, Hirsch has said that he insists people sit on it when they take tours of the studio. Number 34. Between the first and second seasons of Gravity Falls, the creative team behind the show took a road trip up the coast of Oregon. They stopped at every tacky tourist attraction they could find and were surprised by how closely they'd capture more subtle aspects of these gimmicky stops with the mystery shack. Number 35. According to Alex Hirsch, Dipper is secretly jealous that Mabel is more socially adept than him. Whoop, 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 whoop. Number 36. Hirsch has actually made several appearances on the show as himself. In the opening theme, the bottom half of his face can be seen amongst other photos. A caricature of him can be seen in the episode Bottomless Pit, riding the unicycle. On Dipper's author board in the episode Society of the Blind Eye, a photo of him can be seen with other suspicious town folks accompanied by the word who? Number 37. The birthmark Dipper has on his forehead was inspired by a classmate of Alex Hirsch who, quote, had horrendous acne. That's how you got your nickname. I thought your parents just hated you or something. Alex would often map out constellations using his pimples. One day, his classmate had a perfect Big Dipper on his forehead. Number 38. At the show's start, writers frequently and incorrectly assumed that Mabel and Dipper didn't get along. Oh, hey, what's that? Huh? This led to Alex Hirsch coming up with the Ten Commandments of how Dipper and Mabel act around one another. He's 15! Ten Commandments! No, there's no literal Ten Commandments, but there are some rules he often goes over with the writers. The first being, the kids like each other. No matter how much they get on each other's nerves, this never changes. Number 39. Another interesting rule, which also serves as a fun fact, is that Dipper wants to grow up too fast, and Mabel doesn't. Number 40. The series of Gravity Falls takes place over the course of one summer. Number 41. Dipper is actually just a nickname stemming from Dipper's birthmark. He's been referred to as Dipper since he was no more than five years old. The character's real first name has yet to be confirmed, though it may be Roderick, as Quentin Tremblay calls him that in the episode Irrational Treasure. Jeff Rowe, a writer on the show, once tweeted that Dipper's real name is Lominic, like Dominic, but tragically misspelled since birth. Number 42. The original cipher at the end of Dreamscapers was, next week, Xyler and Kraz's Bodexcellent Rad Adventure. Number 43. Mabel is the older twin by a mere five minutes. She brings us up now and then to Dipper's annoyance. She is also one millimeter taller than her brother. Come on, guys. Nobody even uses millimeters. It only makes you taller than me in Canada. Number 44. Dipper and Mabel's middle names are their parents' first names. Number 45. David Lynch was offered the role of Bill Cipher, but he declined. Alex Hirsch resorted to voicing the character with a bad impression of him. Oh, oh, Gravity Falls, it is good to be back! 
Number 46. Mabel has a crush on Alexander Hamilton, otherwise known as the man on the $10 bill. Impeccable taste in the Founding Fathers, Mabel. Number 47. Wendy Corduroy's favorite color is flannel. Number 48. Though their identities are unknown, Wendy is based on several different people. Number 49. Bill Cipher has done his own AMA on Reddit. Number 50. Similar to how Dipper is jealous of her social skills, Mabel is envious of Dipper's academic prowess. I guess it's that you're better at me at like everything. Number 51. When Mabel has nightmares, she meows herself back to sleep. <laughs> Number 52. Seuss's middle and last name are references to Gravity Falls storyboard artist Alonzo Ramirez Ramos. Number 53. If a blanket is placed over Seuss's head, he falls asleep, much like a canary. Number 54. At the Gravity Falls 2014 San Diego Comic Con panel, it became known that Seuss's father is Caucasian and his mother is Hispanic. Number 55. Seuss is the only main character without a criminal record. Mabel and Dipper have been locked up for counterfeiting, Stan has committed too many crimes to count, and Wendy and her friends have been busted for stealing a cop car. Number 56. What exactly was Alex Hirsch doing when he first thought of Gravity Falls? In his words, I was walking up Vermont Avenue in Los Feliz between the post office and House of Pies when the name Gravity Falls popped into my head. It was such a dumb corny joke that naturally I never forgot it and had to develop a whole TV show around it. The moral here is, if you want TV show ideas, go to the House of Pies. Number 57. Alex Hirsch has confirmed that Wendy's mother is no longer with her. Number 58. If Alex Hirsch could have any guest star on the show, it would be Jon Stewart. Ironically, Stewart has said on a segment of his show while jokingly denying that he watches cartoons, he said that Gravity Falls has all of these incredible plot lines. The shout out was much appreciated by Alex on Twitter. Number 59. Dipper is ambidextrous, though he tends to use his right hand more than his left. Number 60. At the end of the show's theme song, an image is flashed, which shows Bill Cipher, a wheel, and various symbols and writings. The wheel has 10 images around its outer edge, with each image being related to an element of the show. As of now, it's speculated that the glasses represent the author, the question mark represents Seuss, the crescent-like symbol represents Stan, the pine tree represents Dipper, the star represents Gideon, the hand with six fingers is tied to the journals, the shooting star represents Mabel, and the heart with the stitch represents Robbie. However, the open bag of ice and the llama are still open to speculation, though Dipper has retrieved ice for his friends on multiple occasions. Number 61. The Konami code can be seen in the same image towards the bottom right. Number 62. Stan's favorite treat is toffee peanuts. Number 63. The background of a flashback in Dreamscapers reveals that Stan grew up in New Jersey. Number 64. Dipper can play the sousaphone. Number 65. When Dipper gets super sleep deprived, he unknowingly starts to eat his own shirt. Number 66. He is also ticklish under his arm. Number 67. Stan owns 10 guns and his appearance hasn't changed at all in the last 10 years. Number 68. All the fingerprints on Stan's right hand have a double loop whirl pattern. Number 69. When Alex Hirsch was 12, he took a trip to Florida, where he was subjected to watching the same infomercial for the car dealership, Family Auto Mart. Family Auto Mart is where the wheel and dealer starts. About a hundred times. He remembers the song from the ads to this day and was inspired by them to create Bud Gleeful. Number 70. Bill Cipher's favorite song is apparently 10 hours of rising shepherd tone. Number 71. Bill Cipher claims that life tastes like uracil, cytosine, and thymine. He dislikes it. Boy, these arms are durable! Number 72. Gideon's design is based off of televangelist Benny Hinn. Number 73. According to Alex Hirsch, Gideon's skin is so soft because he steals Wendy's moisturizer. Number 74. Gideon Gleeful is a play on the phrase Giddy and Gleeful. Number 75. Robbie V secretly draws anime. No shame, Robbie. But you and Ronaldo from Steven Universe should hang out. Number 76. Robbie has known Thompson for at least 10 years. The same goes for Wendy and Tambry. Number 77. He doesn't like people knowing, but Thompson once ate a waffle that had been run over for 50 cents. Thompson! Thompson! Number 78. Brad Breek is a songwriter and composer for Gravity Falls. Dan Cantrell and Neil Cesariga of Potter Puppet Pals and Lemon Demon fame were also in the running. Number 79. Neil Cesariga's younger sister, Emmy Cesariga, is a storyboard artist on the show. Number 80. Wendy wants to live in Portland. Number 81. 
Seuss writes fan fiction about Stan and keeps a photo of him on the break room door. Well, this is getting weird. Number 82. In the commercial for the Gravity Falls Subway Kids Meals, Mabel may not sound much like herself. That's because she wasn't voiced by Kristen Schaal. Number 83. Mabel once fed baby birds using her mouth. She must be really in tune with her inner mama bird. <coughs> Number 84. In the episode Double Dipper, it's mentioned that Dipper has always wanted the name Tyrone, which makes you wonder what his real name is. I will call you number two. Definitely not. Number 85. In spring 2007, while at CalArts, Alex Hirsch created a short called Off the Wall. An animation executive at Disney, Mike Moon, eventually saw it and approached Alex about pitching an animated series. And I think we all know how that story ends. Number 86. Stan has a box of fake IDs and passports. Some of his not real identities include Hal Forrester, Andrew Eightball Alcatraz, and Stetson Pinefield. Number 87. Alex Hirsch once leaked a fake photo of Old Man McGucket writing in the journals. This fooled a lot of fans into thinking that Old Man McGucket was the author. Number 88. The reoccurring goat in the series is named Gompers, after American Federation of Labor leader Samuel Gompers. Speaking of Gompers, Bill Cipher has said that he likes Gompers better this way. Better than what way? There be secrets afoot. Enjoy it while you can, Stan. They'll find out sooner or later. Number 89. If you get some of those Twin Peaks flashbacks while watching Gravity Falls, this is no coincidence. The show is chock full of references to David Lynch's acclaimed series. Look for episodes like Club Club in the Gravity Falls episode The Hand That Rocks Mabel. Number 90. Dipper wrote a theme song for himself that he sings in the shower. That girl is you. Don't come in, don't come in! Number 91. Pacifica Northwest's name is a pun on the Pacific Northwest region of the US. The Pacific Northwest contains Oregon, which within the show's realm contains Gravity Falls. So Pacifica Northwest is from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> We're perfect. Number 92. Bill Cipher wants to see Dipper stick jalapeno peppers in his eyes. That's oddly specific, but characteristically sadistic. Number 93. Despite the fact that her designs always incorporate mass amounts of purple, Pacifica's favorite color is pink. Number 94. On his Reddit AMA, Bill Cipher was asked if he had a family. He replied, not anymore. What does that mean? Number 95. Bill Cipher responded to everything on his AMA in caps lock because according to him, he thinks in capital letters. Reality is an illusion, the universe is a hologram. Bye, Cold, bye! Number 96. Quentin Tremblay is Alex Hirsch's favorite character to voice, probably because he's so cray cray. Number 97. Quentin Tremblay is based off of President Theodore Roosevelt as he appeared in one of Alex Hirsch's student films. Number 98. Pit Cola, which appears in almost every episode of Gravity Falls, is named after one of the show's directors, Joe Pitt. I'm gonna drink it like a person! <laughs> Number 99. The brand of the TV in the Mystery Shack is Worrell. This comes from production artist Ian Worrell's name. Number 100. Gravity Falls' main theme is often confused with Made Me Realize from MTV's show Awkward, which Brad Breek also wrote. Though they're similar, Breek has stated on his website that they are not related or even the same. Number 101. The Paul Bunyan statue seen in the theme song is a reference to the Paul Bunyan statue from the Trees of Mystery roadside attraction in Oregon. Number 102. If you're wondering where Gravity Falls is, why don't you search it on Google Maps? It'll point you to the Oregon Vortex. Number 103. The Shapeshifter was inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing. It was also inspired by Clayface from Batman the Animated Series. And also a Vietnamese spring roll that designer Robert Tree and Corey ate in 2001. Number 104. Chut's Bar's tattoo is the astrological symbol for Mars. Number 105. Old Man McGucket's original name was Crazy Larry. His full name is Fiddleford Harden Old Man McGucket, with Harden being a reference to a class of subatomic particles. Number 106. Alex Hirsch has joked on both Reddit and Twitter that the author of the journals is actually Jordy LaForge from Star Trek The New Generation. Of course, those of us that are fully up to date on Gravity Falls know that the author is actually number 107. The author of the journals. Grunkle Stan's long lost twin brother. Is this the part where one of us faints? Lord.
Thanks for watching this episode. If you liked the video, don't forget to like the video to let us know that you liked the video. In the comments, let us know what facts we might have missed and tell us which one was your favorite. Make sure you subscribe to Channel Frederator and remember, Frederator loves you.